Hey folks, this is Josh Sterney Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. Me and the $100 truck, the tractor, the dogs, and some corn. That's what today is all about. We're going to be harvesting our corn in our second corn garden up here. This is probably, I'm going to say, a third of an acre of corn. I'm going to fill the tractor bucket up with corn. We're going to freeze it on the cob, whole cob, and just have a little bit of fun today working on the farm. So come along, we'll show you what the corn looks like, and we'll show you how we freeze it on the cob and put it up so that we can have some yummy corn all winter long till next season. All right? Woo! Don't ever... From Stony Ridge Stony Ridge Farm Can't say how proud I am of my dogs. Watch this. Load up! Load up! A couple smart dogs. <laughs> come on! Come on! Unload! Unload! That's some good dogs right there. If you need a good farm dog, German Shepherds are great. So one thing about living in the area we live in there are a lot of bugs. This is ragweed right here, and I have sprayed myself down with some cutter to keep the bugs off. Now this is what our corn looks like. No sprays, no nothing. This is Silver Queen corn. Man, it's delicious. I cannot wait. We may make some cream corn in this video too. Show you how we do that. A successful way of doing that. But this is what our corn looks like. Mmm. Sweet and delicious. Mmm. You just can't beat that homegrown corn. So my plan here is to take the corn and put it in the bucket right here and we'll take it down to the shop and get busy on it. There's a lot of corn in here. I don't think I'll be able to harvest all of it. I don't think we'll be able to use all of it, but thank goodness we got some awesome neighbors and we can share corn with them. Rad. All right, what's close by here, we're gonna clear a path where we can get to the tractor bucket here and just start plucking away. Anything that looks dry, we'll leave it on there. None of this will go to waste. All of this that we don't use goes straight to the goats. Got some big, luscious, beautiful ears here. Now I may have already told you this is Silver Queen corn. We planted this somewhere around July the 4th. Nice late, late corn garden. This is an enormous Enormous, enormous bounty of corn for our family. Super awesome. That about does it right there. That's enough corn for me and my wife for the winter. That's gonna be super cool to freeze that up. We're gonna take you down here and we'll show you what we do with it to put it back for the winter time. That way we'll have some yummy corn all winter long. Now we found a nice pretty shady spot. We're gonna set the tractor bucket up ergonomically to where it's a good height for me to work. Probably gonna take about 35, 40 minutes here and shuck this corn. Then we'll take all the shucks and dump them to the goats. I've got a few different methods that I'm working with right here. We'll be taking all of the corn. Once we shuck it, I've got a knife and I've got a cutting board down here. We'll set it up on the end and we'll start working. And as we start working, we'll throw our shucks in the buckets that are sitting down here. I've got freezer bags and I've got a nice butcher knife. I say a butcher knife, but I think it's called a skinning or boning knife. So we'll be using that. So we'll get everything all set up ergonomically so it's easy to work. I'm not bent over, hunched over, anything like that. And we'll work our way through the corn. I'll show you exactly what we do. <laughs> not high enough. I want it higher. So the basic gist of this is we're going to cut back here right where the cob meets the stalk and we're going to come right here and we're going to cut the end off. There are worms. Trust me, there are worms. You can see, see that? 
there's worms in there. So we want to cut that end off and we kind of just feel it out to where it feels nice and fat and plump and we'll slice it off. We've got so much corn here, none of this is going to waste. Anything we cut off goes straight to the goats and they chow down on it. So it's all a good symbiotic relationship here on the farm. And the chickens are mad at me. I don't know if you can hear them in the background, but they're angry. I put them up because they got in the flower bed. Shame on them. So we lop, lop, like, ugh. <laughs> like so and then we'll peel back our shucks if we drop some we're in the yard that's just fine and that's what we get our beautiful wonderful corn perfect I had a viewer to make a suggestion to me and I'm gonna follow what that viewer said so probably three bags of this we're gonna go ahead and freeze stripped off of the shucks and the next three bags or 10 bags or 15 bags we're gonna freeze it just like this so we're gonna cut the ends off just like so and then we're gonna peel back the shuck to where it's you know nice and brightly colored and we're just gonna freeze it like that let me show you the bags that I've got prepared here so these are the bags that I have prepared so you've got enough for a mess you just snatch a bag out of the refrigerator and folks have told me you can cook these in the microwave so what we'll do is take these right out of the bag put them in the microwave for about two minutes a piece and we'll have corn on the cob fresh tasting corn on the cob and this will save us from freezer burn cool we'll let you know how this little experiment works that's what we're going to do with most of the corn today now you think about it if you're doing this for your family and for your kids your kids don't want to eat an ear of corn that long or most young kids don't so this is the perfect little bite-sized ear of corn my wife likes smaller ears like that so here's how we're stuffing our bags we're taking a row of longer ears of corn and we're putting it across the bottom and then we'll take a couple of the shorter ears and put them across the top right here i'll show you Peel this back, just like so. That's good. Putting those longer, bigger ears down in the bottom, just like so. Four fit across the bottom, just nicely. And we'll peel back here, and we'll put two of the short ears right up on the top. Just like that. Now, these don't need to be vacuum sealed. This corn is only going to have to last us through the season and we'll grow new corn next year, but isn't that pretty? Folks, if you like this kind of rural content, be sure and pound that like button right now. Subscribe to the channel. If you like this kind of rural content, we'll have all sorts of stuff. And never mind the Macho Man Randy Savage glasses. Folks, I'm just gonna chat with you a little bit while I work on this corn. So I don't have anybody here to talk to. <sighs> Share some stories with you. So I spent four years in the Air Force. I wasn't always a nurse. If you guys don't know, if you're new to the channel, uh, I'm a registered nurse by profession, but I wasn't always a registered nurse. I wasn't always in the medical field or hospital type job. I never really liked an indoor job. I never really wanted to be inside all the time. And, Hence, the farm. Chopped a caterpillar in half on that one. Anyway, um, so I was in the Air Force for about four years. I was stationed at Hill Air Force Base in Ogden, Utah. Wonderful, wonderful place. Utah was a wonderful place to live. And the reason this reminds me of a story is because I used to do handyman work. That's I was an electrician in the Air Force and I did handyman work once I got out and that's how I put myself through college is doing handyman work in my GI Bill. So I was trying to make good decisions as a young man, 20, 21 years old and uh, with my handyman business I had this young lady that would pay me with tamales. <laughs> Uh, this kind of reminded me of that because uh, the corn wraps right here would make awesome tamales. If you guys know of a good recipe for tamales, post it down there in the uh, comments. Anyhow, this young lady, she was probably, I was 21-ish, she was probably 35 or 40. She had a couple kids, Hispanic lady, and it was pretty clear she needed some help. She was a single mom 
she didn't have anybody there to help out most of the time I guess so what I do is kind of a tradition Saturday mornings I'd go over there and I would work for a half hour 45 minutes an hour and I would uh, trade my work on her house to help her out for authentic delicious home-cooked Mexican food she made the most awesome tamales I'd never even had a tamale before then she made the most awesome tamales anyhow I think sometimes giving is a lot more rewarding than receiving I'd rather give people this corn than I would sell it to them my dad asked me if I was selling the corn no I think gifting it is the way to go all right folks we've got an enormous bounty of corn I'm gonna say I'm gonna freeze back probably 60 pounds of corn that's enough corn for us for the year trust me some of this corn might be getting used next year I wanted to tell you thank you so much for coming and joining me here on the farm vlog I hope you learned a little something I hope you had some fun with me be sure and pound that like button if you want a t-shirt pick yourself up a shirt down below in the video description don't forget farm stock 2018 Farm Stock 2018 is our road trip across the country. We're going to go visit all sorts of farms. We're going to be stopping at Polyface Farm. We're going to stop at One Lonely Farmer's Place, Guy in Wyoming, Our Wyoming Life, Tractor Time with Tim, Meyer Hatchery, all sorts of cool places. So guys, pound that like button, subscribe to the channel, and go down and pick yourself up a shirt. Help support Farm Stock 2018. There's a cool Farm Stock 2018 shirt with a big American flag on the back. I think you'll like it. We'll see you next time on the Farm Vlog. Woo! We'll Oh, that's a good knife. Can do it on the Hi. Where? Mommy, mommy. Why should I buy a Tony Ridge Farmer t shirt? Because Mrs. Tony Ridge is going to kill him if he doesn't start making some money on YouTube.